for this story, we journey to Orange County, California's arid hills, close to Whiting Wilderness Park. Desert, scrub vegetation, and sloping rocky hills make for the ideal cover for a silent, stalking predator. The hills above Santa Monica extend into the city, but despite the traffic and the bustle, predators are absent, and they hunt as they're supposed to. The mountain lion population is growing in this ideal habitat, and it is the predator of this story. Mountain biker Mark Reynolds, 35, enjoys spending his free time competing on the trails of Whiting Wilderness Park with his pals. He is alone today, without a pistol or pepper spray, just the freedom to indulge in his favorite hobby out in the open. The trail system's twists and turns stretch for miles as they spiral up and down above the parking lot below. If someone becomes lost or hurt, it might take some time before other people can assist him. About 30 minutes into his ride, Mark comes into a little incline and begins riding his high-performance mountain bike frantically in an attempt to reach the top. He struggles to the top of the rise, when his feet suddenly lurch uncontrollably. His chain is hanging from the front sprocket when he glances down. He grabs hold of the two broken ends of his bike chain as he squats down to inspect the issue. Due to the strain of the ascent, two links in the chain had been broken. So a quick question for the crowd, who always has a spare bike chain on them? Did Mark? No. He has a very quiet watcher following him who has noticed an opportunity when he bends over to try and solve this issue. Before the man can realize his situation, the gap between the predator and Mark, who is now the prey, closes. Mark might have caught a glimpse out of a blur in the corner of his eye before being knocked to the ground by a 110-pound male cougar's 35-mile-per-hour hit. Mountain lions, or cougars, target two important regions when they attack. Either they clamp onto their victim's neck and shatter it, cutting off the blood and the air supply, or they use their rear legs to claw crucial areas while using their front claws to pierce the skin and grab their prey by the paws. This mountain lion did the first thing. He chewed at Mark's neck and face while his claws were lodged into his shoulders, disemboweling him in the process. The hungry, developing lion bit into Mark's flesh and struggled to drag him several yards off the trail and into the bush. He eats some of Mark's carcass before lying down for the afternoon to rest and digest. Only Mark's mountain bike is left lying on the side along the trail. Anne Jelle and Debbie Nicholas are friends who also enjoy a good mountain bike, traveling to Whiting Wilderness Park to hike one of their favorite paths. They ride off on the trail with another biker watching. They are tough girls who ride hard as they climb the hilly trail system. The trail becomes a series of short switchbacks as the group of women proceed, and Anne pulls ahead of Debbie a little. However, as Anne rounds a corner, she notices a mountain lion leaping from its ambush in the distance. The impact throws Anne off her bike and she becomes disoriented due to the force and the ferocity. The cougar savagely bites down on Anne's neck and begins pulling her into the undergrowth. Out of pain and terror, Anne cries and kicks, but there is nothing she can do to stop the vicious monster. Debbie hears Anne screaming as she turns the corner. She rushes to her friend's side while being unsure of what's happening. I'm gonna die, Annie screams, and Debbie hears her. I'm gonna die, she repeatedly shouted, and Debbie witnessed a large mountain lion grabbing her friend by the throat, scared. In reaction, Debbie cries, I'm not going to let you die, and grabs a hold of Anne's feet as she begins to pull against the lion. Debbie loses more ground for a few minutes as she gains this strange tug of war, but she's still astounded by the might of this enormous cat. The young man, Nils Magnuson, who had been observing the lone bikers in the trail, now hears Anne's calls for aid and pedals over. In a desperate attempt to frighten the predator, he throws Anne's bike in the direction of the cougar. Debbie orders Nils to throw rocks at the mountain lion, and he does so right away. The cougar flees the onslaught as enigmatically as he arrived, after being pelted with rocks. When Nils and Debbie start attempting to help Annie climb the slope to the trail, they notice that one of her cheeks was torn from her face and hanging down. The lion biting her neck and carrying her while limping had almost suffocated her to death. Paramedics are called by Nils, and they show up in about 20 minutes. 
A sheriff's helicopter from Orange County is hovering nearby as the paramedics attempt to save Anne's life. Paramedics gestured them away since the backwash from the helicopter was blowing dust and debris all over the rescue area. They had no idea that the lion was hiding not very far away, observing the rescue, and would not move even when the chopper came extremely close to it, trying to scare it away. At that point, the helicopter's passengers discovered Mark's body buried in the undergrowth. Anne was transported up the hill to the chopper and transferred to the mission hospital for surgery that would save her life. Her left cheek was practically pulled off of her face, among other injuries. She now has more than 20 wounds around her voice box and her neck. The lion attempted to break her neck by biting on the back of the neck, causing a significant wound. Her face was held together by 200 stitches and the reattachment of the muscles and the nerves that regulate it. The young, healthy mountain lion that attacked Mark and Anne had an average body weight and was rabies free. Authorities found that the lion had eaten human tissues from Mark including skin, liver, lung tissue, and when they performed an autopsy on the animal. According to experts, California is home to between 4,000 and 6,000 mountain lions, with more than six in the Whiting Ranch Park alone. The first mountain lion fatality in Orange County was Mark Reynolds. According to biologists, mountain lion assaults, they're uncommon. Standing upright and being in a group are two habits that might prevent the attack, though. According to California data, there have been 21 mountain lion attacks on people since 1890, but the number is on the rise since 19 of them have happened since 1986. Mark's death was the first since 1994, and the sixth fatal mauling of a human by a mountain lion in California. Deputies claim to have shot and killed the 110-pound mountain lion that had been attacking people after the event. They were not taking any risks the next day. According to Jim Amormino, a spokesman for the Orange County Sheriff's Office, they will currently shoot any mountain lions they come across close to the trail. A 70-pound female lion was killed by a car four miles later the same night, but authorities don't think that animal is responsible for the attacks. According to Doug Updike, a senior wildlife scientist with the California Department of Fish and Game, says, Cougars are frequently secretive and they don't want to be observed. It's very strange conduct. A mountain lion assault is less probable than being struck by lightning. However, he emphasized that Reynolds was alone when he was attacked, as are almost all cougar mauling victims. Additionally, he was probably kneeling, which according to Updike, might give the impression of vulnerability to a pursuing cat. Although mountain lions generally avoid humans, according to experts, they're more inclined to attack small prey, such as a person crouching down. A tiger might not be able to tell the difference between a person hunched over mending a bicycle and a small animal. And when they do attack, they have a propensity to grab anything and just drag it towards them, much like a cat would a toy. Tests on the dead animal could turn up further information that would help explain why it was so hostile. According to wildlife specialists, such accidents are becoming unavoidable due to the increased development in rural areas. More people are residing there and enjoying themselves. It was nothing more than an unfortunate accident, and the officials had dealt with it in the best way that they could. Now, if you are someone who's going on a trail in such an area, I would advise you to go with company. The more people you're with, the less chances there are of an attack. Also, carry something to protect you, so if anything unfortunate happens, you'd be able to defend yourself.